one of the largest differences between the oiling system in a road car and the oiling system in a racing car your road car only has pressure the race car has a pressure chamber and it has four suction chambers the idea of the four suction chambers is to remove all of the oil out of the sump and put it up into the tank so then the crankshaft can't pick that oil up and drain power which is a huge thing for that reason when you turn the engine off all of the oil sits down in the bottom of the sump and there's no drain in the sump so one of the first things that we have to do we have to rotate that oil pump mechanically that'll take all of the oil out of the sump and put it up into the oil tank and then the oil tank will drain it out whereas with your your normal road car you simply just remove the the plug out of the sump and and drain it out as we all know the filtration system is a little bit different with all of the oil that returns from the sump back into the oil tank is what we call a rock filter we check that every night that's going to show us if there's any failures of any components inside the engine it's going to tell us straight away and subsequent to that, it also just runs a normal spin-on RICO filter, the same as your road car or similar to your road car. There's, there's a couple of different things that influence the time frame that we change engine oil. If we see a real high temperature occurrence at a, at a hot event, so we're up around sort of 115 degrees of engine oil temperature, we'll change it. If it's a real cold event, obviously we get a lot of fuel bypass past the ring. That contaminates the oil, dilutes the oil down. They can have two consequences. Dilutes the oil down and changes its structure so it doesn't do its job and the engine wears, but it can also separate the fuel out of the oil and that goes into the catch can, which as we've seen in the past can become quite a dangerous situation. Firstly, when we fill the engine oil, we meter it through an electronic meter that tells us exactly how much oil we've put into the engine. Every night after we run, or maybe the following morning when we run the engine up, we'll check that oil level again and make sure that we're not burning any oil. Burning oil is another thing that would tell us that we've got a problem that may lead to a premature engine change. And then we do the same when we get home. Checking all of those levels, checking the rock filter. We would also take an oil sample. It's a similar kit to what can be purchased online that most people would commonly use. We'd send that oil sample away to Newlon and they're looking for metals that shouldn't be in there or whether the oil's breaking down, whether the oil's up to the task. So that's really good feedback for an oil chemist to maybe look at changing the structure of the oil so that if that happens again, the engine's protected a little bit better and we're learning from that occurrence. When it comes time to refill the engine, we use a pressurised canister that has a digital readout on it. Unlike a road car, it's, it's not filled through the rocket cover. We go straight into the top of the oil tank. The oil tank has a sight glass on it. When we run the engine up um, after the initial service, we hold the RPM up over two and a half thousand. That makes the scavenge pump at sort of the early stages of its best efficiency. We look at the engine oil level at that point. If we switch the engine off, all of that oil will drain out of the tank and back down into the sump because the sump's the lowest point now. So the only relevant oil level that we've got is at two and a half thousand RPM or above and we're looking at that in a sight glass. Process for filling the transaxle oil, largely similar process to filling the engine one. Once again, it's a pressurized canister with a, uh, a pump handle with a digital readout on there. When, when, the, when it leaves the factory, it'll leave with three or so litres of transaxle oil in it, and that's enough to get the transaxle at its correct operating level and also saturate the cooler because the cooler drains back into the transaxle. Sometimes if we drain it at the track, if we want to check the gearbox magnet and make sure that there's no, um, there's no internal damage, it will appear on the magnet. If we want to do that check, we refill the transaxle a similar way to the engine with two and a half litres of oil, not three.